Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Jerusalem's top political and security brass pledges to persist the fight against Hamas until the Islamist terror group is decisively destroyed. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris highlights that the terror group Hamas is the one dragging its feet in negotiations to realize a temporary ceasefire in exchange for a hostage release outline. Egypt insists that the absence of a political process that could revitalize the Palestinian aspiration for statehood is the root cause to the lack of peace, security and stability throughout the Middle East. Jerusalem will reject any long-term ceasefire without the eradication of the Islamist Hamas terror organization. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant, during a tour of the northern Gaza Strip, re-emphasized Jerusalem's unrelenting resolve to deal with the Islamist Hamas a decisive blow. He stressed, quote, We will not end this operation, this war, without destroying Hamas. There will be no such situation, there will be no Hamas as a governmental organization, as an organization with control that can operate troops. There will be no organized troops, we will not permit that, no matter how long it takes. It is important to know that the IDF announced the expansion of its ground offensive in the southern Gazan city of Hanunis, entering into new neighborhoods of the Zaytun sector. Meanwhile, over the weekend, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu underscored that the Israeli government is working tirelessly to guarantee the destruction of Hamas by waging two distinct, albeit correlated, campaigns. ולהבטיח שעזה לא תהווה עוד איום על ישראל. המערכה המדינית נועדה לתת למערכה הצבאית את הזמן והמשאבים להשגת היעדים הללו, עד להשגת הניצחון המוחלט. מזה חמישה חודשים אני פועל יום יום עם חבריי מול מנהיגי העולם ובתקשורת העולמית, כדי לאפשר חופש פעולה לצה"ל ולכוחות הביטחון. חופש פעולה זה הוא חסר תקדים מאז הקמת המדינה. כראש ממשלת ישראל, אני מחויב לשמור על האינטרסים הקיומיים שלנו. יהיו אשר יהיו הלחצים עלינו, והלחצים הללו הולכים ומתגברים. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu went on to highlight Jerusalem's undeterred response to its enemies, confronting their belligerent attacks on Israel with decisive retaliatory responses. אנחנו פועלים בעוצמה נגד כל אויבינו בכל החזיתות. בצפון אנחנו מכים בחיזבאללה, מחסלים מפקדים בכירים שלו ושל איראן באזורנו, ומונעים מהם לממש את כוונותיהם הרצחניות. בדרום חיילינו ממשיכים בחיסול גדודי החמאס בח'אן יונס, והם גם נערכים להמשך. ושיהיה ברור לכם, יהיה המשך. ניצחון של החמאס מחייב את חיסול כל גדודי החמאס הנותרים. גם במרכז הרצועה וגם ברפיח. אנחנו נעשה זאת תוך פינוי האוכלוסייה האזרחית מאזורי הלחימה, אנחנו נעשה זאת תוך דאגה לצרכים ההומניטריים שלה, ואנחנו נעשה זאת תוך שמירה על הדין הבינלאומי. כי ככה אנחנו פועלים. במקביל אנחנו עושים מאמץ בלתי פוסק להשיב את כל חטופינו. אזרחי ישראל, זוהי מטרה קדושה. אנחנו עובדים עליה סביב השעון. אני דורש... לדעת מראש את שמות כל החטופים שיהיו במתווה. טרם קיבלתי תשובה על השאלה הזאת. ומוקדם מדי לומר, חרף הרצון שלנו, אם נשיג בימים הקרובים מתווה שחרור נוסף. אנחנו עושים מאמצים גדולים כדי להצליח. אבל ברור לכם דבר אחד, אנחנו לא נתקפל מול הדרישות ההזויות של החמאס. לא נעשה זאת משום שאם נתקפל, פשוט לא נהיה כאן. אבל עד היום, בזכות השילוב של לחץ צבאי ומשא ומתן תקיף, הצלחנו להחזיר בחיים 112 מחטופינו. אנחנו נחושים להחזיר את כולם. עם מתווה או בלי מתווה, אנחנו נילחם עד לניצחון המוחלט. It is important to know that while Israel is negotiating under U.S. auspices via Qatari and Egyptian mediation, in good faith, the Islamist Hamas is seemingly dragging its feet 
unwilling to reach an outlawing that would have the 134 hostages released in exchange for far-reaching Israeli concessions. And while the humanitarian plight of Gazan civilians is seemingly dire, any ceasefire or additional aid entering into the terror-infested Gaza Strip would not take place unless Hamas agrees to the so-called Paris outline, details of which remain somewhat obscure. In this regard, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, addressing an event commemorating the 1965 Selma March, emphasized her view of the need for an immediate ceasefire to take hold. And given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. For at least the next six weeks, which is what is currently on the table. This will get the hostages out and get a significant amount of aid in. This would allow us to build something more enduring to ensure Israel is secure and to respect the right of the Palestinian people to dignity, freedom, and self-determination. Hamas claims it wants a ceasefire. Well, there is a deal on the table. And as we have said, Hamas needs to agree to that deal. Let's get a ceasefire. Let's reunite the hostages with their families. And let's provide immediate relief to the people of Gaza. The American vice president went on to assert that the Islamist Hamas must be eliminated. Hamas cannot control Gaza. And the threat Hamas poses to the people of Israel must be eliminated. Hamas is a brutal terrorist organization that has vowed to repeat October 7th again and again until Israel is annihilated. Hamas has shown no regard for innocent life, including for the people of Gaza, who have suffered under its rule for almost two decades. And Hamas still holds dozens of hostages for nearly 150 days now. Innocent men and women, including American citizens who were brutally taken from their homes and from a concert. I will repeat, the threat of Hamas poses to the people of Israel must be eliminated. It is important to highlight that after the massacre that Hamas and its terror affiliates inflicted upon southern Israel on October 7th, which consequently forced the displacement of Israeli school children from the town of Stevot, among others, to schools in safer regions throughout Israel. The IDF greenlighted the reopening of a number of schools, essentially allowing thousands of children to resume their somewhat orderly school year. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Saudi capital of Riyadh, the Gulf Cooperation Council held its 159th ministerial council session yesterday during the course of which Egyptian Foreign Minister Samih Shoukri reiterated Cairo's position that the only way to revitalize regional peace, security and stability would be through a path of a political solution, which the Arab world in particular, and the international community at large, aims to include a so-called two-state solution formula in which Israel would grant the Palestinians control of all disputed lands that were reconquered during the 1967 Six-Day Middle East War. <laughs> من خلال تجسيد دولة فلسطينية قابلة للحياة عاصمتها القدس الشرقية وعلى خطوط الرابع من يونيو 1967 لقد ألقت تلك الأزمة بظلالها الثقيلة على أمن المنطقة ككل حيث تتسبب 
الاعتداءات الإسرائيلية في اضطرابات إقليمية يتوسع على نحو مستمر فبتنا أمام تهديدات خطيرة لسلامة وحرية الملاحة البحرية في البحر الأحمر ومضيق باب المندب كما أن الأوضاع في لبنان أصبحت تستدعي قلقا حقيقيا على ضوء الاعتداءات الإسرائيلية المتصاعدة هناك It is important to highlight that in contrast to the accusation voiced by Cairo's top diplomat, the actor responsible for the low-intensity conflicts in both the Red Sea, that includes repeated attacks by the Iranian proxy Ansar Allah, which is dominated by the Yemeni Houthi tribe, and along the Israel-Lebanon border, where the Iranian proxy Hezbollah launched an unprovoked offensive against Israel on October 8th, are both instigated, financed, armed, and facilitated by no other than the Islamic Republic of Iran. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It's important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based non-profit ministry with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, if you're blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs, we would appreciate it if you would consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I'd like to encourage you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.